All right, a little bit of an update here. Uh, things have not gone smoothly as it usually goes with project cars. Um, well, this isn't so much a project car. It's a car that was driven almost every day, at least five times a week. Um, well, it was a daily driver until I got my, my actual daily driver, uh, an RX350, but this became my fun slash weekend car slash track car. Um, but yeah, this project's gone uh, a little bit sideways. Um, I had a parts car, 2001 parts car that I ended up uh, using the whole drivetrain. Uh, so I got a 2002 Mazda Miata, oh sorry, 2001 VVT motor and a six speed manual transmission. And I'm also putting in the Torsen uh, that was mated with this transmission because according to one of my uh, Miata friends, he said if I use the Torsen that came with the car, the car is a 99 um, NB1. It looks like an NB2, but it's a uh, front end conversion. Um, my friend said that the 3.9 that comes with the uh, six speed uh, wouldn't wouldn't really work, work out well for me if I used my old diff, which is a 430 with a six speed. So I decided to swap both. Uh, the reason being is very short gear ratios, uh, similar to a Mazda Speed Miata. If you've ever seen any acceleration videos of a Mazda Speed Miata, uh, you would see that there's three shifts before 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. And uh, with uh, the five speed drive um, transmission, it's just two shifts. So a little bit more user friendly if you're just going on spirited drives in the country, whatnot. Um, but hey, if you're all about acceleration or if you have built a higher pin motor, then hey, all the power to you. I mean, it's doable, people have done it. But uh, the reason I swapped over to the differential also, um, and also another reason why I was happy to get this donor vehicle is because it only had 144,000 kilometers. So that's like, I don't know, 78,000 uh, 78, miles. So it's uh, fairly low when it comes to Mazda drivetrains. So low mileage diff, tranny and motor, why not, right? Uh, the tricky part is gonna be getting the variable valve timing, uh, running with a 99 computer. So uh, yeah, this is the uh, old motor. Um, it's crazy, you don't realize it because you drive the car all the time, how tired a Miata engine can it really be you don't know because you don't have anything to compare it to. You just drive it, floor it, whatever. It's not that fast. And you're like, whatever, it's a Miata with 140 horse. Well, this motor, I seriously lost some power. Probably 20 horsepower, I'm guessing. Uh, I bought the car at 205,000 kilometers, so that's, I think, 120,000 miles. Um, the mileage didn't really concern me because the car was rust-proofed, owned by a 60-year-old guy who couldn't drive it no more and due to health issues. But yeah, this motor was really tired, probably a little compression or something. And then it de developed a rod knock. So that's why I started looking for a donor vehicle. Um, sometimes <laughs> I wonder if it wouldn't have been easier to just get a 99-2000 NB1 motor. But hey, that's not, not how life works, right? You, you come across a good deal and that's that, right? So with the 2001 motor, I'm going to be keeping the uh, manifold because it's higher flowing. A lot of the NB1 guys uh, use this manifold and you also need the EGR tube because um, it's like one third the weight, literally the log steel manifold. I don't know what it is, cast iron. It's honestly really heavy. You could use it as a weight. <clears throat> the one that comes in 99 and 2000 motors, uh, non-California spec because I know all those cars are all messed up but this is a nice tubular unit. Very light, uh, better flow, according to all the Miata guys online. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna be using that. And another thing that I've done, that I believe I've mentioned in another video is, in order to make this motor work, 
um, with my, because I didn't feel super comfortable rewiring the ignition system. It's coil on plugs. Uh, I'm sure I'll get around to it eventually, but I just actually changed the injector harness. So I just unbolted the, the upper plenum here on the intake manifold and uh, I swapped the injector harness. It just plugs back into this. And then you got your two, uh, two plugs here for your coil packs, the 99 style coil packs. And then you could just make a bracket, hang it off the back, off to the side here, I've seen, uh, for the, you know, for the time being. And you have to trim down the uh, plug wires, uh, those guys right there. The tubes, you have to trim down because they're too snug in the NB2 VDT head. And uh, what else did I do? I also put in, put a new clutch, uh, resurface flywheel, um, throw bearing, pilot bearing. Um, I did a rear main seal, or it's also known as a rear crank seal. Um, the front crank seal was also done. I did buy cam seals, but after taking everything apart, I noticed that there was actually no leaks from the cams. So rather than doing all that work, as the saying goes, don't fix it if it ain't broken. Uh, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I uh, put a new water pump, timing belt, and tensioners, and thermostat. And while the engine's out of the car, it's, I, uh, I just changed the motor oil. And I have spark plugs that I will put in uh, after the car is running, because it, it, it runs pretty good with these uh, plugs that came with it. But I always uh, change plugs with the new cars and new motors. So hopefully everything works out. Oh yeah, also valve cover gasket. You put a dab of this uh, high temperature gasket maker over in, over top of uh, right where the camshafts go. So I got one here, a dab here, a dab here. Right there, there, uh, also at the front. You can see a little bit of the red right there. So, yeah, we'll see what happens, guys. All right, thanks for watching.